Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving deep into a head-to-head -head comparison of the 2017 13-inch MacBook Pro models. The Quai 5 with 8GB of RAM and 256GB SSD versus the Quai 7 with 8GB of RAM and 512GB SSD. Eight years later, are these laptops still relevant? Let's break down the key aspects, performance and who they are for in 2025. And don't forget to like, subscribe and drop a comment with your thoughts. Let's start with specs. Both 2017 13-inch MacBook Pros rock 700 Intel Kabilex chips, 8GB of RAM and Intel Iris plus graphics 640. The Quai 5 has 2.3GHz dual-core processor that can turbo boost up to 3.6GHz combined with 256GB SSD, while the Quai 7 bumps a 2.5GHz processor that can turbo boost up to 4.0GHz combined with a 512GB SSD. Geekbench 6 scores show that i5 is at 900 for single core and 2800 for multi score, and the i7 is at 1000 for single score and 3200 for multi score. That is a 10 to 15% edge. GPU scores are identical at 14,000 in metal. SSD hit around 2800 megabits per second for read speed and 2000 megabits per second for write speed, but the i7's larger storage is clutch for creators. The i5 is great for browsing, zoom, and light editing but the i7 shines for video rendering or coding, cutting export time by 10 to 20% in Final Cut Pro. Talking about the display quality, the 13-inch Retina display on both is tuning, even in 2025, with 2560 by 1600 resolution, 227 pixel per inch, and 500 nits of brightness, it scripts and vibrant. Both cover 100% sRGB and 80% DCI P3, making colors pop for photo editing and Netflix binges. True Tone isn't here, but the wide viewing angles and anti-glare coating make it versatile. So whether you're a student or a creator, this display is a win for both models, with no difference between i5 and i7. For sound quality, and uh, let's just be honest here, these speakers are insanely good. Both MacBooks deliver rich, loud stereo sound with solid bass, Perfect for music, podcasts, or video calls without headphones. ...them to cancer. So we switched to wood, thinking it was safer. Until one morning, my husband took a bite of toast and said it tasted like raw chicken. Minutes later, he had stomach pain, a fever, and started throwing up. I rushed him to the hospital. The diagnosis? Salmonella. From the bread. We knew right away it had to be the cutting board. When I got home, I checked it. It looked clean, but deep in the grooves, there were bits of old food. I smelled it and nearly gagged. That same raw chicken smell. I always cleaned it well, hot water, soap, even bleach. Filling a small room effortlessly. No distortion at maximum volume, and the placement beside the keyboard enhances the immersion. So whether you're editing audio or chilling, the i5 or i7 offer the same top tier sound experience. The butterfly keyboard gets hit, but it's snappy for fast typists, both models have a shallow 0.5mm travel with a crisp feel. The backlight is evenly lit, great for late night work. It's not perfect for everyone, but it's reliable if you avoid dust. The massive force touch trackpad is highlight, huge, precise, and battery. Smooth for gestures like uh, mission control. Its size makes editing or navigating a breeze. Identical on both i5 and i7, just as you can see over here. Now, these are the most outstanding features always on all the MacBooks across all the years. Apple build quality is unmatched. Both MacBooks have premium aluminum unibody that feels rock, solid, and sleek. At 1.49 cm thin and 1.3 kg, the silver or the space gray finish still looks modern. But the ports, oh, just two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports and a headphone jack. You need a dongle for HDMI, USB uh, Type-A, and SD cards, which is a pain for creators. So here there's no difference between the models, and both support fast charging via USB Type-C on either of the USB ports available. Talking about charging, the battery life is solid but aging. Both have 54.5 watts per hour battery, delivering 6 to 8 hours of mixed use, web, video, and light applications running in 2025 down from 10 hours when they were new. 
The i7 may drain slightly faster under heavy loads due to its higher clock speed, but for students or remote workers, either model lasts a school day with careful use, but don't forget to carry a charger all the day. And finally, who are these for? The Quai 5 that goes for between $300 to $400 in the used market is ideal for students, writers, or casual users doing web browsing, office, or light Photoshop. Its 256GB SSD and 8GB of RAM are tight for multitasking though. The Quai 7 that goes for $400 to $500 USD suits semi-pros, freelance editors, coders, and musicians. Needing an extra speed or storage, both run macOS or Norma with tweaks, but lack Apple intelligence and long-term support. So skip these if you need M1, M2, M3, M4 for power. And so, Quai 5 or Quai 7, which 2017 MacBook Pro would you grab? Or are you going for the newer M1 series? Comment below. And let's debate. Smash the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more tech lives. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you up in the next one.